This morning we'll look at Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 through 11. As we consider love speaks sacrificially, Paul found that all of his human ambition was nothing as compared to knowing Jesus. Jesus' sacrifice prompts us to love each other sacrificially. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text today from Philippians chapter 3, beginning at the second part of the fourth verse and continuing through the eleventh. Paul writes, If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put conf confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. So far the text this morning. Today we're talking about love. Love speaks sacrificially, and this is certainly the season to talk about sacrifice, isn't it? You know, last August, as school was beginning, a lot of people headed off for college, some for seminary, and a number for high school. People went to Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary in Mequon, Wisconsin, or Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota. Some of the high school students that are looking forward to perhaps being in the public ministry, teachers, pastors, staff ministers, went to one of our two prep schools, either Michigan Lutheran Seminary in Saginaw or Luther Prep in Watertown, Wisconsin. That's a sacrifice for many families. If you had a child that decided they were going to be a teacher or maybe a pastor, and they went off to high school, quite a young age to leave home, they would be there four years. And then four more years at Martin Luther. That's eight years if they went the full route to prepare to be a teacher. But if they were going to be a pastor, it would probably be 12 years before they would really know the reuniting of family. Doesn't mean families don't try to get up there. Doesn't mean students don't go home on break. But for nine months out of the year, they're apart, aren't they? They're doing things that are important up there. And nevertheless, families are not sitting together around the dinner table. They're giving up being at events together that are important. Parents are sacrificing money for tuition, money for books and rooms. It's a lot of sacrifice. But we don't want to just focus on the sacrifice of some of the young people in our Senate as they prepare, leaving home at 14. But think of other examples of sacrifice. This morning we were looking at the weather. Weather's been an interesting thing the last week, hasn't it? And there on the front page of theweather.com, it has a picture of a bald eagle sitting there, camera on the nest, hunched over her eggs. Well, seemingly hunched over her eggs. At the beginning, all there is on the nest is a gigantic pile of snow. You know that bird will not leave those eggs no matter what happens. Pretty soon you see that eagle's head, that beak, and then the head popping up out of the snow and shaking itself off. And then the bird stands up, stretches its legs, pushes away some, uh, stretches its legs. Did I say eggs? 
puts its wings out, cleans them off, and then sits back down on the eggs, snow surrounding her. Sacrifice is a part of life. And yet there is no greater sacrifice in all of creation than we see in the scripture as Christ the Lord gives up his glorious throne in heaven, takes on our humanity, becomes one of us here, and lives our life, our human life here on earth. With all of the hunger, all of the, the challenges, all the struggles that come with it. And he did it perfectly. He kept every one of the commandments that we heard read this morning in the Old Testament lesson. In his thoughts, in his words, and in his deeds. We can't even keep our thoughts under control, can we? We've used the example before, but if I told you not to think of a zebra, the very thing that pops into your mind is a zebra. If you tell a child not to run around the pool, the child runs around the pool. That's what our fallen nature is. But Jesus himself, totally human, was able to keep the law perfectly. And not just for himself, but for you and I. Because it was required of us, wasn't it, to keep that law in every way from the moment of conception to the moment of death. One sin brings death. One sin in a life makes that person a sinner. A sinner has no salvation apart from the cross of Christ, but only death and pain and torment in hell. But Christ endured it for us. He endured the trial, the suffering, the pain, and the crucifixion so that on his shoulders your sin and mine might be forgiven. The guilt of that sin destroyed. Now the proverb says to us, a righteous man sins seven times a day. I think that's conservative. But if we use that number, seven sins a day, times seven days, 49 sins a week, times seven weeks, well, I'm just forget it. It's like <laughs> 200 and some thousand sins a year. And all we have to do is sin once and it's all over. We look at sacrifice today. We talk about the importance of sacrifice. We know and understand sacrifice in our lives because parents are sacrificing for children. Children are sacrificing for parents. People sacrificing for each other in little ways all the time. But Paul relates to us and to the Philippians that his life before Christ was one of selfish sacrifice. And that's what we have apart from Christ, selfish sacrifice. He gives us examples. Paul, you know, was named Saul at birth. That was his Hebrew name. Saul said he was an exemplary Hebrew among Hebrews. He was not of mixed lineage. He could follow his family's pure ancestry all the way back to the tribe of Benjamin, who was the child of Jacob, whose name God changed to Israel. Not only that, but in everything he was observant. He was observant and so dedicated, in fact, he was one of the Hasidim, the faithful ones. He became a Pharisee. And there was nothing against him as a Pharisee because he zealously upheld that role as a leader in Israel. 
Not only so, not only was he progressing among, beyond those of his age who were Pharisees, but he was so zealous that he even persecuted the church of Christ. And we know about his conversion as he took letters of arrest to Damascus in order to seek out Christians there and haul them back to Jerusalem for trial. He was a Jew's Jew, so to speak. And from a Jewish point of view, there was not one thing that could be held to his account. He had the respect of his, sub or his, his superiors. Well, what does Paul say today? He tells us, whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may be gain, gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. He walked away from it all. He walked away from his pride. He walked away from his power. He walked away from his wealth. Everything that was to his glory, self-serving glory as a Pharisee. And what did he do? By the power of the Spirit working through the Word, he emptied himself. Can't do it on your own. We might try and be more humble in our life. We might try to do better at helping people. But all of those things have a personal desire. And in fact, when we, apart from Christ, try and be humble, we're very proud about it. In fact, we brag about our humility, don't we? Because that human nature just won't go away. But with Christ who takes us to the cross. With Christ, who nails our selfish pride and ambition and all of the things that tempt us in this world to that cross. Who fills us through the word with his spirit and enables us to follow him. With Christ, he takes that old Adam and he drowns it. He drowns it in the water of our baptism. And what arises is the new man, Romans says, the new person, the new you, remade in Christ Jesus. So we look around at those things that are self-righteous, and you know what? If I had a children's sermon, and I had a baby at home, I might bring in a full diaper. Because that's exactly what all of our personal selfish righteousness is like. The dirt in a diaper. So, how do we move beyond it? Again, not on our own, but only in Christ. You know, it says in the scripture that all of our worldly priorities, whatever they may be, sports, family, video games, all of those things are of no use. Parents, if we look at our lives, what do we brag about with our kids? What they can accomplish, their sports ability, their musical abilities, this and that. But what is the most important thing in their life and in your life as a Christian? That thing which makes you a child of God. All the rest is far less important than that gift of faith. And so it's not surprising then that Jesus tells us to love him with our whole heart. But not on our own power, but by his power. Like the rich young ruler, we want to do it. But we can't do it without Christ. So, Jesus says, 
What is more, I can, or I'm sorry, Paul says, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. The real value in life, the real value in life is knowing Christ. Because when you know Christ, not just that Jesus died for the sins of the world, but when you know Christ and you can say, Jesus died for me. When that head knowledge is translated into heart knowledge, that 12 inches changes everything in perspective. And now we understand what real love is. Real love. Not conditional love. Not human love. Not the love of Hollywood as it's portrayed on the screen. But real love. Unconditional love. Sacrificing, fully accepting love. The love of Christ for you. And the power of that word in your life enables you to speak that love to others. He goes on in verses 10 and 11 to say, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead. This morning Paul isn't encouraging you to walk away from your life. To leave your job. To leave your family. To become uh, empty in your bank accounts. He's not calling you to do that. But he's telling you that these things are only means. They're means that God has gifted you with in order that you may have your vocation and that little circle of life where you live to share his love with others. It may have to be done sacrificially. It may have to be done at the cross. But we have to put away our selfishness, our pride, our arrogance. Empty ourselves of all that is. And allow Christ through faith and the power of his word to fill us. Then faith active in love fills us with biblical understanding and the wisdom of God. We're able to set biblical priorities in our lives and we're enabled by Christ and his sacrifice to speak of his love sacrificially. The power of Jesus' resurrection, the miracle of the miracles, is sometime in the future I will rise from the dead. You will rise too. Everything around you that you see is passing away. It will not last. But the one thing that does last is all that is done in faith for Christ. Different type of wealth. Not money. Not all the symbols that money can buy. Not the earthly honor and glory of friends and peers. It's a wealth that comes through faith. It's the gift and the symbols of that faith as Jesus prepares the eternal mansions where you will live. And it's the honor and the respect and the love of God for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a wealth that can't be calculated with human, with, in human terms. But it's a wealth that lasts forever. So the challenge this morning, be in the Word. Know your Lord intimately. And don't be afraid to speak of His love. His love for you and His love for others. For that kind of a love, that love is sacrificial love. And that love speaks sacrificially. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m. 
If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.